The multi-mission General Dynamics Convair Model 48 Charger was a prototype for a light attack and observation aircraft designed and developed for the Vietnam War as one of its first counterinsurgency aircraft. The project was undertaken under extreme secrecy. In March of 1964, 30 engineers and production workers at the Convair facilities in San Diego, California started working in a secluded area. That number would eventually increase to 200. When the top secret project was finally unveiled, Convair announced it as a light armed reconnaissance aircraft, or LARA, to be used by the Marines, Army, and Air Force. Convair had anticipated the needs of the military early on, but competition from the North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco became an unrelenting race to the skies. Toss of a coin. The Consolidated Aircraft Corporation, later known as Convair, was founded by Reuben H. Fleet in 1923. The prolific company became one of the most significant aircraft manufacturers in U.S. history, and for almost 60 years, its identity was intrinsically linked to the city of San Diego. Convair developed several notorious aircraft models, including the PBY Catalina, the B-24 Liberator, and the F-102 Delta Dagger. It also created the Atlas Missile. In 1959, two Marine Corps developed the concept for what would later be known as a light marine attack aircraft. The idea was to build a small, low-cost aircraft able to provide close air support and operate from roads near battlefields. Then, by 1961, the Convair Division of General Dynamics began exploring counterinsurgency aircraft, or COIN. A 1-6 to six scale model was eventually developed and tested in the Convair wind tunnel in 900 separate test runs. An amphibious configuration was also tried using a 1-7 to seven scale model. The hydrodynamic characteristics of the float system were determined during test runs in the towing basin, both at high and low speeds and in rough and calm waters. In the last quarter of 1963, all these requirements were consolidated into a tri-service request for a light-armed reconnaissance and counterinsurgency forward air control aircraft to be used by all military branches. The twin-engine aircraft would need to carry at least 2,400 pounds of cargo, six paratroopers or stretchers, and have basic aerobatic abilities. It needed to operate from an aircraft carrier, fly at least 350 miles per hour, take off at 800 feet, and be capable of performing amphibious operations. Its armament specifications included four 7.62mm machine guns, a gun pod with an M197 electric cannon, and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. As America's military involvement in Vietnam grew in the early 1960s, they did not have suitable aircraft for jungle fighting. Convair anticipated this need and secretly began developing a model. The company had already designed a flight demonstration aircraft even before the request for proposal was issued. In March of 1964, Convair formally proposed its Model 48 Charger as a response to the tri-service request. At least 10 design proposals came from the major aircraft manufacturers. Work on the prototype commenced in total secrecy. The project was developed in Building 69, locked and guarded within a hangar. Employees would get access with a magnetic card and be thoroughly scanned by a security guard when going in or out. Convair started constructing the prototype as a private venture, and most personnel didn't exactly know what they were working on. Still, an entire team of engineers, draftsmen, and fabricators was mobilized. By August of 1964, the U.S. Navy announced that the winner of the Lara request was the North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco. However, the Marines and the Air Force openly preferred the Charger, and the construction of the prototype continued. A bird in hand. Six months after Convair had first proposed its Model 48 Charger, the completed prototype was rolled out with the slogan, A bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Even coins were printed out with the marketing slogan in September of 1964. The prototype was built to production standards in an attempt to guarantee no significant modifications during actual production. The Charger was 4,450 pounds, lightweight and compact, ready to operate in narrow and confined areas. It was a twin-boom monoplane, aluminum monocoque, with a fiberglass nose, rear fuselage, and wingtips. The retractable nose wheel undercarriage had a conventional tricycle configuration and was specifically built for a 20 feet per second rate of sink. Two Pratt & Whitney Canada T-74 engines of 650 horsepower powered the aircraft, along with two counter-rotating three-bladed propellers. A short wingspan of 27 and a half feet rendered almost the entire length of the wing behind the slipstream of the propellers. 
This allocation increased the effectiveness of the full-span trailing edge slotted flaps and leading edge slats. Takeoff and landing distances were considerably reduced by deflecting the slipstream into the vectored thrust, and in tandem seats were placed for a pilot and an observer under a sliding canopy. Simplicity and performance were Condor's main concerns. The rectangular wing and tail could easily be produced from one stamping, which reduced production costs and speed. The booms, including the vertical tail and rudder, the fuel tanks, and the landing gear, were interchangeable on both sides, providing a 48% commonality of parts, four times that of a conventional aircraft. All of these factors contributed to a low initial cost and improved logistics on the field. Flight controls were operated manually. They featured a large, horizontal, unique tail system and vertical tails with rudders, which functioned as directional flight controls. On the other hand, the lateral system employed combined circular spoilers and ailerons on the outboard span. In contrast, the landing gear and flap systems were operated hydraulically. For takeoff, the flaps were positioned at 10 degrees, while for landing, they turned to a full 90 degrees. The full span of the flaps and the inboard flap provided the necessary high lift required for short takeoff and landing fields. A hinged tail cone in the rear worked as a cargo bay, able to carry up to 2,000 pounds. Four 7.62 mm machine guns could be mounted in pods on the sides, and hard points under the wings and fuselage were able to carry another 2,000 pounds of external storage, like bombs, rockets, and gun pods. The model also met the amphibious operational requirement and could be fitted with two giant floats. Constructed for maximum accessibility and ease of maintenance, one engine could be removed by only two men in the span of 15 minutes, using a simple rope if a mechanical hoist wasn't available. The Charger was a stout machine, and up to the task. Fate Model 48 underwent extensive ground tests after its rollout, including fuel gauge calibrations, stationary engine runs, and taxiing at several speeds. The engine response was comprehensively reviewed, as were the nose wheel steering and brakes. Its maiden flight took place on November 25th, flying from Lindbergh Field to the North Island Naval Air Station. Veteran test pilot Johnny Nebo piloted the aircraft, while the observer seat held instrumentation equipment that monitored the flight's performance and transmitted data to the ground station. The prototype was designed to take off with a ground run of 225 feet, but the operational version would be capable of speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. A 3,000-mile ferry range enabled its simple deployment from anywhere in the world. Some modifications were required after the first flight. The aircraft needed an increase in wingspan and a modified tail. But the Charger demonstrated excellent STOL capabilities with a standard payload and was awarded a 100-hour joint test contract. However, several pilots from the Air Force, Army, and Navy found the aircraft hard to control. On its 196th flight on October 19, 1965, the prototype crashed and burned in Lindbergh Field. The evaluator, a Navy test pilot, ejected at the very last minute and broke his foot when it got stuck under the instrument panel. Still, he survived. Even though the crash was attributed to a pilot error, a contract for production was awarded to North American Aviation to build the OV-10 Bronco. Convair wanted a revision, but the decision was primarily made for political reasons, and further development on Model 48 was scrapped. The Model 48 Charger would become the last complete aircraft that Convair ever built. Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical stories and anecdotes. And don't forget to leave a comment down below about any other topic of your interest.